shared. So that that means a link will be shared with you via email in the, about the next 24 to 48 hours. So don't worry about trying to take lots and lots of notes because you'll also be able to revisit the slides as well as hear the presentation at your leisure. Audience questions, as I said, are anonymous. They will be answered at the end of the webinar. And this will give you a chance to type them into your question box as you think of them. But we do ask that you submit type questions throughout rather than wait until the end so that we can group them all together in relevant topics for you and avoid duplication. If we do run out of time before we've had a chance to answer all of your questions, answers to these can be emailed to you at a later date. Now, throughout the webinar, you're going to be asked for your opinions in the form of a couple of multiple choice polls. So when a question does come up on your screen, you'll have about 30 to 40 seconds to tick the answer you want to make and then click submit. If after this webinar, anybody feels they need more detailed information on the webinar topic or other relevant subjects, we're happy to provide further details. Just make a note of the contact details that will appear at the end of the presentation, or you can complete the more info section on the post-webinar survey. This is a very brief multiple choice survey that will pop up when you log out, so if you could take a couple of minutes to tell us what you think, your views are very important to us. I'm going to now hand over to Poppy Jacobs and Stuart Clough from Resource Futures for the EDOC for Local Authorities presentation. Remember, it's an audience participation webinar and your typed questions are welcome throughout for answering at the end. Stuart, I'll hand over to you. Okay, thanks Ria and good afternoon everyone. Uh, before I forget, I want to do thank CIWM for hosting this webinar and thank you to all the delegates for giving up some time today to learn more about EDOC. I'm Stuart Clouth, I'm joined by Poppy Jacobs. We're both consultants at Resource Futures, an environmental consultancy based in Bristol. Um, we're currently administering and managing EDOC on behalf of DEFRA and the three devolved national governments. In terms of our objectives for today, we think that this webinar is a great opportunity to provide an introduction to EDOC for local councils. In particular, we'll aim to cover what EDOC is, how it's used, who can use it, and what benefits it can bring to local authorities amongst other organizations, as well as how the system can be used to comply with duty of care. Following this, we're planning to go through a couple of demos, looking at key elements of the system, just to show you just how easy it is to get started. And as Ria mentioned, we're hosting a Q&A session at the end of the webinar, so please ask any questions at any point um, using the sidebar on the right-hand side. And depending on the time available, we'll go through and attempt to answer them at the end. We'll also be throwing in a couple of interactive polls along the way, so please keep an eye out for them. And it's worth mentioning at this point that this is just one in a series of planned webinars, so please let your customers and colleagues know that they can check the EDOC website for any details on any upcoming sessions. Uh, a little background. So duty of care means that all organisations in the UK, including councils, have a legal duty of care to responsibly deal with any waste that they produce by ensuring that they store, transport and dispose of it without harming the environment. There are a number of different elements of the duty of care, but one of the most important features is that all organisations must complete waste transfer notes, otherwise known as WTNs, for the waste that they handle and keep these as a record for at least two years. We estimate that over 23 million paper waste transfer notes are produced every year in the UK. This is equivalent to almost 3,000 trees per year, so it's clearly a large collective environmental impact. What is EDOC? So EDOC stands for Electronic Duty of Care. It's a free UK-wide system that transforms the way that waste transfers are recorded, moving from the current paper-based system to online equivalent. The service was launched in January 2014 as a voluntary system that allows users to create, share, sign and register waste transfers, everything that they could do with the paper-based system, but now online. In terms of its history, EDOC began as a four-year program co-financed by the European Commission and delivered by the Environment Agency in partnership with five key partners across the UK. These were CIWM, Reconomy, RAP, Northern Ireland Environment Agency and the Welsh Government. And it was also supported by DEFRA and SEPA to ensure the project had representation across the whole UK. 
In January 2015, ownership of EDOC transferred to DEFRA and the three involved administrations, and it's now administered and managed by us at Resource Futures. So who can use EDOC? All public sector organizations that produce or move waste are free to use EDOC, from local authorities to schools and the NHS. And EDOC can also be used by any UK businesses that produce waste. Uh, whether they're supermarket chain or national construction company, um, and to SMEs, uh, through to the companies that manage waste, so large waste management companies, uh, two waste carriers, and brokers. Although EDOT is not mandatory, we think that moving to an online system makes complete sense. It's a natural move away from the outdated paper-based system and brings a huge range of benefits, some of which include saving users time spent filing, searching and retrieving records manually. The system is very easy to use and navigate, and we'll go through some demos later. And it has a real positive impact on the council resources bottom line, cutting out the need for storage and retrieval costs, which some initial studies suggested that they could reduce by more than 50%. So huge, huge financial savings as well. It also helps the cut down on paper waste. It talked about earlier, large environmental benefit as well as cost carbon savings. And importantly, it gives, <coughs> excuse me, it gives local councils the tools to interrogate their own waste data and easily identify opportunities to improve efficiency, reduce waste and cut disposal costs. Paper records, as we all know, are sometimes incomplete or difficult to read, but with EDOC there are also complete fields, drop-down menus, prompts and templates that all make it easier for users to complete more accurate records. And having online access to an online system should also help councils improve their compliance with legal duty of care. Amongst other things, EDOC stores waste transfer notes for two years and then archives. It also ensures that you record all the right information. For example, you can't submit a note without some fields being completed. And it prompts you to check waste is being transferred to a registered party. This process is uh, facilitated by direct links to public registers on the site itself. As well as helping local councils, EDOC brings benefits for the wider waste industry. So it reduces the reliance on the, the costly business waste surveys, it's estimated to save UK government around £1 million per year. And finally, we're starting to see EDOC contribute to a more complete and accurate picture of waste produced across the UK than we've ever had previously. Uh, this data is invaluable for understanding the circular economy and for planning for waste at local and national level in the future. So we thought it would be helpful to run through some of the system's key functions to give you an idea of how it actually works. For example, users can create a waste transfer note and then share it between parties. In this case, a council may create a waste transfer note and then share it with their waste contractor or, or the other way around. Following this, both parties can review, edit, sign and store their waste transfer notes online, which remain accessible through each party's EDOC account. So for example, <coughs> Any note that your organization has been involved with as a transfer, a transferee, or broker, or dealer can be viewed easily through your EDOC account. The system allows for the creation of single waste transfer notes or season tickets, as well as the option to include multiple waste types, containers, and collection frequencies on each note. EDOC users receive an automatic email notification when there is an action for their attention or when a season ticket is about to expire. And in addition, users can view a log of actions and edits made by either party on the note. Other features include the ability to search and retrieve records quickly and easily, create downloadable reports on the waste transfers users have been involved with. There is also an optional tracking system to reveal the end de destination of your waste should it transfer between several parties. And this is, a, this is a great feature, although it does rely on all parties in the chain using the tracking, and we'll briefly go into this later on in one of the demos. There's also a test system available, which is a complete replica of the, the live site, which users can test how EDOC will work for them. So we really encourage users to register on that system first and have a little play around with it. 
And if you get stuck at any point, please don't hesitate to contact the help desk at any point. And these contact details will be on one of the slides at the end of the webinar. They're also on the contact us page on, on the EDOT website itself. EDOT has a, a fairly sophisticated reporting system, so we'll explore a little bit of this in one of the demos later on. But essentially, the system can report on all the transfers that your organization has been involved with, either as a holder or receiver of waste, or as a broker or dealer. So some example queries that you might want to ask EDOC include, how much waste do I produce each year or quarter? Or what type of waste code do I handle most? All of the reports on EDOC can be tailored using a range of filters and then downloaded in a CSV format for further analysis in Excel. One of the reports it's possible to run is the Waste Tonnage Returns Report. So this, this one allows organizations to output their EDOC in, in output their, their data in a, in a format suitable for direct input into the Waste Tonnage Returns form that operators with environmental permits must complete. We're starting to hear about some interesting ways in which EDOC reports are used. For example, some organizations are using their EDOC reports to inform their invoicing systems, amongst other interesting things. <clears throat> so in summary, the system allows users to do everything that they current, currently can do through the paper-based system, but much more quickly and much more efficiently. <clears throat> so there are two main ways in which organizations can interact with EDOC. First is through, a, through web browsers, so um, all the main ones are available, so you've got Opera, Firefox, Internet Explorer, Safari, and Chrome. And the second way is through the API, which stands for Application Programming Interface. And this is done through third-party systems. So the first way is quite straightforward. Like any other website, I'm sure you've all been on, you log on to the website, and then you can input and extract information through the browser. And the second way is a little bit more technical, and it should probably will require the impact, the um, involvement of your IT department. So if your organization already has an online or a digital means of creating and storing waste transfer notes, then you can still use EDOC to fulfill your duty of care through the API. So the API is a set of commands that can be triggered to automatically submit data to or receive data from EDOC through your own system. So I won't go into <clears throat> much more detail at this stage, but if you'd like more information on the API, please feel free to contact the EDOC Technical Service Desk through the Contact Us page on the EDOC website. And they will be able to provide more information on the API as well as access to it. There's also a test API as well, uh, if you want to inform your IT department that you can, you can play around with that, with that system as well. And there's plenty of documentation to go through it as well. OK, a um, few facts and figures. So there are over 5,000 activated user accounts on EDOC. And these have collectively recorded over 2 million tons of waste through more than 50,000 transfer notes. The system has grown very fast over the last couple of years and is continuing to grow at the same rate. Local authorities make up just 3% of the registered users on the system. So although this sounds a little low, there are over 5 million businesses in the UK. So definitely making up a pretty fair share. However, Local authorities organize waste collection and disposal with many clients, so they're a real influencer and can be a catalyst for rolling out EDOC even further. So apologies for all of that information in one go. Um, we have an interactive poll for you now and then a demo. So there's a little break, break from the slides. So Bria, if you wouldn't mind launching the third poll, we're asking people what their main interest, the key interest key reason for their interest in using EDOC. So if there is more than one reason, please, please select the word most appropriate to your organization. And the options are to save time and money, to cut down on paper, to improve compliance, to collect high quality data for reporting and planning, and to improve or to improve your understanding of waste. So we'll allow about 30 seconds or so to answer, and then we'll take a look at the results 
following which I'll pass you across to Poppy who will take you through the first demo. <clears throat> oh, wow, okay. Already I wasn't expecting results that quickly, but okay, so yeah, the it looks like the, the main reason is to save time and money, very important, especially in current era. Um, and then the second, it looks like, is to collect high quality data for reporting planning. Again, another very important reason for using an online system like this. Copy over comments on. Yeah, I think um, the reporting functions in eDoc are a huge benefit that you don't get from the system without having to go through a lot of extra bureaucratic stuff. So that's a great reason to start using eDoc. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Maria. So thanks, Maria. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Poppy Jacobs, a consultant for Resource Features, and I provide help and support for eDoc. So most of you will have been in touch with me already about registering for this webinar. There are a series of video guides on the eDoc website which give brief tutorials of some key tasks in eDoc. And they're a good start to using the eDoc system. But for this webinar, we thought it might be best to provide a brief demonstration using the eDoc test site, showing you how to create and share a waste transfer note. So as Stuart mentioned, the test system is a replica of the live site. So that's why we'll be using it for this demonstration as it's a good way to practice using all the different elements of eDoc without confusing real and practice data. And if at any point you have a question, please don't hesitate to ask and we'll try to answer them all at the end. So I'm just going to go into the browser now so we can have a look at the eDoc site. So here you're on the eDoc homepage. And to log into the eDoc test site from the eDoc homepage, Click Help and Support, followed by the eDoc test system. Then here you click through to use the eDoc test system, and we have to log in. So once you've logged in, you'll see the home page. And you can always tell whether you're on the test site or the live site by checking three things, because it's important to not get confused between the two. So the first check is the URL right up here at the top. We'll always have test-portal. The second thing you can check for is the background of the test site is covered in the word test, as you can see here on the main part of the page. And the third test is by looking up here in the banner, and it says eDoc test, whereas in the live site it'll just say eDoc. So on the home page, you're presented with a range of options across the menu bar here at the top and on the main page down here. So firstly, we're going to create a waste transfer note. You can either do this through the quick link here that says create a waste transfer note, or you can use the menu bar. So if you click transfers, you'll be presented with four different options here. First one is create, which is what we're going to do now. Second is search, which allows you to search through your existing transfers using a range of filters. Then we've got view all, which allows you to see all the transfers that you're party to. And finally, upload, which allows you to upload transfer notes directly to the site. And we'll look at that in a bit more detail later on. So you should notice immediately that this form is exactly the same as a paper waste transfer note. There are no new information requirements, but there are some optional features that we'll have a look at. The first thing that we need to specify is whether our waste transfer note is a season ticket or a single transfer, and also the dates within, this, within which this note is valid. So we're going to create a season ticket that lasts for one year starting from today. As per the duty of care, transferers, or the current holder of the waste, are required to describe their waste in both text form and with the EWC code, the European Waste Classification Code. So let's say we're transferring municipal waste, Describe it here, and then we have to add the EWC code. Now, I happen to know off the top of my head that the EWC code for mixed municipal waste is 200301. But if you haven't memorized it, or if you're not sure of the EWC code, you can start typing it in here, and EDOC will give you some prompts. Type in next. You can see down there at the bottom 
municipal waste, and that's added it to our waste transfer notes. Alternatively, we can use some drop-down menus and go through the different chapter, sub-chapter, and finally the stream to select our waste type. There's mixed municipal waste, and then we click add to add it to the waste transfer note. The next thing we need to enter is the container information. So that's the container type and the container volume. So let's say we're using four-wheeled bins. It's also worth me pointing out that as you work through this waste transfer note form, there are these little information boxes. So if you hover over that I at any point in the system, it will give you an indication as to what that field is requiring of you. Uh, let's say we've got 10 different containers and the volume of the container. We know that the volume of a four-wheeled bin in this instance is 1,100 litres. So we need to change this unit. And now EDOC has told us that there's an error because the unit's really important, as EDOC will give you a prediction of the weight based on your container type and volume. So we know that we need to change this unit here from cubic meters to liters. And then EDOC will predict the weight of each transfer. So it's possible to overwrite this value if you think you've got a better estimation of the weight by just clicking in the box here. Next, in the case of a season ticket, we add in the frequency of the transfer. So this is input as the number of days between transfers. So let's say we're creating a waste transfer note for a weekly collection, but in seven days. Now, EDOC supports a simple form of waste tracking, and this section is optional. But if all businesses involved in the journey of your waste from production to disposal agree to quote EDOC generated tracking numbers and they also provide the intended fate, then EDOC can report the last known fate of the waste. So let's go, this is going to recycling. We can put in tracking information. I won't go into much more detail here about tracking, but for more information on how tracking does work, please see the frequently asked questions on the eDoc website or get in touch by the help desk. You can hide that section, it's optional. Now, in addition, if you're required to submit quarterly waste tonnage returns, then by supplying waste tonnage information in this optional section here, you'll be able to generate a report to help you with these returns that Stuart will talk about a bit more detail later on. Next, we input the transferrer or the current holder of the waste, which in most cases will be the person creating the waste transfer note, but it could be a broker or dealer. To complete the address fields, you click on this is my business and it auto populates with information that you supply when you register on eDoc. To select one of our sites, and then there are a few other mandatory fields, such as the SIC code, and the type of organization, including whether it has an exemption or license. Following on from this, we add in the transfer location, and this can also be copied from the transfer information. Again, select the site. Oh, I've put that in the transfer. Here we go, copy address from transferrer. And that will automatically put in the information from the transferrer. Finally, we enter the transferee or the party receiving the waste. So here, let's say we're transferring the waste to company A at the site of A office. When you then save the note, it goes into draft status. So here we can check for any errors or omissions. As you can see, it's in draft status. And we can check here if anything's wrong before then sharing it with the transferee by clicking Submit here at the bottom.
Once the note has been shared, you can see it's in shared status, both parties will receive an email notifying them that there's a waste transfer note that requires their attention. The users can click on the link in that email to bring them directly to the waste transfer note on the system. And then both parties have to sign the note in order to be compliant with duty of care. There are several ways to do this, and the quickest and easiest way to do this is using a PIN that's set up when you register. So to do so, I click Sign as Transferrer, Sign with a username and PIN. Please note the clause here that says, by signing, I confirm that I fulfilled my duty to apply the waste hierarchy as required by regulations. And also, by setting up this transfer note, I confirm I've also fulfilled my duty to ensure the waste is passed to an appropriately licensed party. By hovering over this information button here, you're directed to the FAQ, which lists the public registers so that you can check whether a waste carrier, broker, or dealer is registered, and then click Sign. Other ways to sign the note include uploading an image of a signature or an image of the paper version of the note, or confirming that the signature is retained locally. The latter ways may have to be used if either the transferrer or transferee is not registered on eDoc. So if we imagine that company A has signed the note in paper form, we can sign the note on behalf of the transferee using confirm the signature is retained locally. Then we can see that the note has gone into agreed status. And only then does it become compliant. As you build up waste data on eDoc, you can start to benefit from the reporting functionality in eDoc, which Stuart will talk about more later on. If you have lots of waste transfer notes, it might be easier to fill in their information in a spreadsheet and then upload them in bulk to the eDoc system. So if we click Transfers and then Upload, we can download a season ticket spreadsheet template by clicking here. Now, I've got one open that I've already started completing. Immediately, you can see that some cells are color-coded. These pink cells are mandatory, while all other cells are optional, which makes data entry simpler and minimizes errors when you then upload it to eDoc. So in this sheet, you can see I've filled in each column, which represents a separate waste transfer note. I've populated the first column with exactly the same information as on the transfer note we just created, and I've copied and pasted this information into the second column to create a second note, and I've just changed the waste description, the waste type, and I've also decided it's going to company B rather than company A. So if you have to do that on bulk, it can be much quicker to do it in a spreadsheet. When we upload this to the eDoc system, do that now. Here you can see the two different waste transfer notes that we've uploaded, and they're automatically in shared status. They can be signed on bulk by checking these boxes at the side, and then clicking Sign as My Business. The way that season tickets for waste are designed means that technically the prediction you make for the weight per transfer results in a predicted total weight rather than a measured weight. And once a note has been agreed by both parties, it's possible to go back into that note and then actu enter actual transfer weight, which will give your organization much higher quality data and then allow you to monitor more closely how your predictions are matching up with your actual waste transfers. So here are some of the things that people are saying about eDoc. I won't read them all out, but we will send the slides as well as a link to this recording after the webinar to give you a chance to find out a bit more. And one notable example comes from Herefordshire Council, who say that by June 2016, approximately one third of Herefordshire's customers completed their waste duty of care online. Herefordshire Council took part in a case study for us to give a clear indication of why they decided to transition from a paper system to eDoc how they went about making the change with their waste contractor FCC environment, and how it's helped them. So why did they decide to start using eDoc? Prior to using eDoc, Herefordshire were providing three separate copies of waste transfer notes, 
one to the customer, one to the collection contractor, and one for the council's own records. Both Herefordshire and FCC recognised that using eDoc could greatly reduce the bureaucratic burden associated with having to check, validate, and scan, and send all these paper waste transfer notes. To make the transition process as smooth as possible for customers, Herefordshire provided a guidance document with a step-by-step -step outline of how to create an account on eDoc. In addition, they provided help by telephone during the transition period. And in order to encourage customers to register, Herefordshire introduced a £10 administrative fee for those customers still using paper waste transfer notes. In this way, the council was flexible to the needs of all their customers while incentivising this electronic system. So how did that help? Hereford councils say that using eDoc eliminate the need for scanning paper waste transfer notes, resulting in save time for officers, contractors, and businesses alike. In addition, FCC now have much better visibility and control of their transfer notes, with higher quality data that will allow more accurate reporting. So you can find the full version of this case study from Herefordshire on our website, along with plenty of other examples of optimization. I'm going to hand back to Stuart now for another demonstration. Okay, so the, the second demo we'd like to present focuses on the reporting functionality of eDoc. So, as I mentioned earlier, one of the key benefits of using an online voice tracking service like eDoc is that it can collect all of your information and present it back to you in an effective manner. So, we've already logged onto the system, so oops, let me just exit the PowerPoint and bring up the website. Okay, so reports are accessed in eDoc by clicking on the reporting section in the navigation menu. EDOC can produce four distinct reports, so we'll look at each of them independently. The first one is called the business report, so this deals with all of the waste transfers your local authority has been involved in, either as a holder or receiver of waste, or as a broker or a dealer. For example, it will report the tonnage of waste produced or handled each year or quarter, or the types of waste handled. So we'll go into that. Now. Okay, so there are a series of filters on the page that allow you to specify the time period, the area cover coverage, the EWC code, the SIC code, and the last known fake grouping of the waste. In addition to this, you can filter by time range of the transfers here, <coughs> by the business name and the site name. And there's a, there's a whole range of other filters. I won't go into each, each of them independently, uh, but you can tailor the reports um, by using these these filters. So I think what what I'd like to to view the report by month. So I'll, I'll set, select time period by month there, and <clears throat> I'm happy with all of the other filters. So I can click execute bottom. So the page should return a table containing the predicted. So we've got the the data by by quarter and by month, as as I specified, and the country and the region. So we 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 have predicted weight here. So this is the estimated weight recorded on season tickets. We've got the recorded weight, and this is the actual weight as recorded on on season tickets or single transfers. And these are both visualised in this charts in the final column. We also have the transfer count, which is the number of transfers occurring in that time period and region that we've just specified in the filters, and the postcode count, which is the number of distinct locations in which the transfers happen. So just briefly, we can see that on our test system in November of quarter four in 2015, we added 95 tons to EDOC in the form of waste transfer notes. And these occurred at, well, they were through two transfers and at one location. 
So it's then possible to take a screenshot of this page for use in reports, or at the bottom, you can click download as in CSV format for, um, for further analysis in Excel if required. So the next set of reports deals with waste tonnage returns. Uh, operators with an environmental permit must complete waste returns to tell the re regulators about the waste that they've either re received or removed from their, their site. So we have click on the reports option again. <clears throat> And we have two distinct reports in this section that allow EDOC users to prepare their returns based upon the transfers that they have submitted to the EDOC database. The first one of these provides information on the waste received at a site, and the second on the waste removed from the site. So we'll just look at the first one here. Click into this, and here we can specify the quarter that we're interested in the site name, and if you have a business reference ID, you can add it here as well. So just select the last two quarters, and if I select the location and the site name, and then click Execute, then you can see that EDOC will present us with a page of all the information most importantly, in the right format to submit the waste tonnage returns. So similarly to the business report, the information can be downloaded in CSV format for analysis in Excel by clicking <coughs> or for adding to your, your um, waste tonnage returns forms. So the final report allows us, allows us to get an overview of all the waste transfers in EDOC. So we do that by clicking on Report, All Waste, EDOC, All Waste Report. So in the same way that we used the filters in the business report to view data on our own transfers, the All Waste Report allows you to filter all waste transfers in EDOC to view any information of interest. So this is all waste that's coming from all user accounts on, on the system. So I mentioned earlier that, that all the waste the information in the All Waste Report is anonymized, and if the amount of data is small enough to deduce which organization the waste belongs to, it is not displayed in the results. So I want to view the All Waste Report by quarter, so I'll change that in the time period. So I'll leave all the remaining filters in place, and I can click Execute at the bottom. And then, as you can see, the report returns information in a similar amount to that of the business report, but just in a little bit less detail. So in all, in all the reports, it's worth noting that the report criteria at the top here can be changed very quickly by, by using this shortcut button here called Change. So if I, I can click on that button there, I want to have a look at data by year. Scroll down again and click Execute. So it's just a quick way of changing the search criteria, in the report criteria. So in summary, the reporting functionality in EDOC can be very useful in providing your organization with an indication of the amount of waste produced and handled through EDOC. Like any reporting system, the quality of information you get out of it is directly related to the quality of information you put in, so please keep that in mind when completing transfer notes. And furthermore, there are various optional elements of the waste transfer note form. So if you require more detailed reports, then the detail needs to be there on the notes as they're inputted. So Poppy went through the, the, the waste tonnage returns section briefly. That section needs to fill, be filled in on each report, on each form, if you would like to need to return your waste tonnage returns <laughs> reports. Okay. Going back to Slides now for another poll. So this is our second poll, and um, the question is, what is stopping your organization from using eDoc? We've got five options again. The first is, we already have an electronic system in place. The second is, the cost and effort involved in switching to eDoc. Third is, the difficulties in getting customers to register. Fourth is we're happy with the current paper system, and five is if you have another reason that's stopping you from using eDoc. So we'll give you a few moments to complete the poll, 
and then we'll have a look at the results. So the results are in, and the main reason that people have um, that's stopping them from using eDoc is the difficulties in getting customers to register for eDoc. And I understand that this, it seems maybe silly to be using eDoc if not everyone else is using eDoc. However, there are lots of benefits from using eDoc, and maybe getting other people to register isn't as difficult as you might initially think. So we're going to go through a quick demonstration of how to register on eDoc, and also how to invite your clients and customers to use eDoc as well. Hey, thanks, Poppy. Yeah, um, we'll go through a, a demo of registering on eDoc. And as most people said, that get, getting your businesses uh, to, to register on eDoc as well is the key reason for, your, for stopping your use of eDoc. We've also got a brief demo on inviting businesses to, to eDoc. And we try to make this process as easy as possible um, so I'll go through that as well. So again, we would leave you with a um, little brief demonstration of how to register um, so that you can all go away and do it this afternoon. So feel free to also register on the test site as well and play around with the system if you'd like to get more of a feel for whether EDOC suits your requirements at the current time. And bear in mind that if any time you get Stuck, then you please also contact the eDoc support help us using the details and contact us section. So if we go back into system. And I'll log out. So the register button on the live site is found on the eDoc home page. But again, here we're using the eDoc test site. Um, which is accessed through the help and support page. So if we just click on the register button in the top right here. So first the form asks for details about a user who will manage your account in eDoc. This is known as a business administrator. The business administrator is able to create accounts for other users within the organization or to create other business administrators. Following this, you can supply details about your organization here and about your main site, which, for example, may be a depot or head offices for local authorities. The majority of the rest of the form is, is relatively self-explanatory, but I'll go through some of the important elements now. So you'll notice in the business administrator section up here, there's a field called signature pin. This is a four-digit PIN used by this account to digitally sign the notes. And you saw Poppy using it earlier. It's also worth noting that any users that have the, the business administrator can set up with, to use this account, each can have their own individual PIN. The second important section is, the, your, is your main, main site's notifications down here. In the first box, you need to specify the email address of somebody who should be notified when a signature is required on transfer note. And then the second box, put the email address of somebody who, who should be notified in a, if a transfer note is amended. So they can be the same person, um, and also you can, you can have more than one email address um, in each box, and just separate that with um, what, just have one email address per line. So, <clears throat> Bear in mind that the system is sophisticated enough to allow the business administrator to add multiple sites to each account, and each one of these can have a distinct email address if required. The more information you provide about your organization in this stage, the more helpful eDoc can be. The details that we input here are used to automatically fill in the fields when completing a waste transfer note. And it, they're also used to link transfer notes created by other businesses to your account. So Please try to be as accurate as possible and complete as many of the fields here as possible. 
So to complete the form, we need to accept the EDOC terms and conditions, and you can view them by clicking on the link here, and then complete the capture. Select EDOC, know that you are a real person. And then on clicking register here, the system will send an activation link to your email address, which you must have clicked on to activate your account. And I think you have seven days to, to click on your, to register your, to activate your account, sorry. Okay. So once you're registered and logged in, the business administrator can create other users who may require access to the account. So I'll just log in again. Okay, and to do, add more users, you can click on the business menu and manage users. Once we've done that, we can scroll down and click create user here. Firstly, you need to select a username, and this can be anything. It needs to be unique, though, that's one thing. Um, then we add the name and the email address of the new user, and then we need to input a role. So it's possible to select more than one of these roles, if appropriate. Business administrator manages the registered account on eDocs, so they can create and manage users. They can manage sites, create sites, and invite other businesses, and things like that. The transfer manager is able to create, share, and sign transfer notes on the account. <coughs> Business reporter can use all of the reporting options that we went through earlier. And an all, EDOC All Waste reporter can do just the All Waste reporting option that I also, also showed you. So to get the most out of EDOC, it's important to encourage the businesses that you work with, uh, those that you transfer waste to or receive waste from, to register on the system as well. So this way there is there is no need for any paper to be created during the transfer as both parties can sign the notes digitally. So we've created an easy way to invite businesses to EDOC and I'll briefly go through that now. So to do that, we need to click on the business menu again and then click on registration invitations here. Yeah. Then we need to download the CSV template file, um, and it will open it automatically in Excel. So we've again we've we've prepared some details already in a in a separate sheet. Open that up here. Yeah, the sheet is is very very straightforward. It um, just includes your it's quite quite self-explanatory really. And I've created one row here. So when I'm happy, I can go back to eDoc, and I can choose the file, upload registration invitations, click open, and then upload. So we're then presented with a table displaying a list of the businesses we're planning to invite alongside a text box, allowing you to write a single custom message to all businesses and three separate links that can be used to direct businesses to a web page somewhere or attach other files to the invitation, such as contract TNCs or details of how EDOC might work between partners, that kind of thing. So bear in mind that if attaching documents, they must be hosted somewhere, either on a website somewhere or through a file sharing server, for example. And then once we're happy with that, then we can click on Send Invitations. And EDOC will then automatically send invitations to all businesses specified in the upload file here. You could have, um, I think, up to 200 um, businesses created at once. It may be more. So be sure that the details on your in your upload file are correct, or at least to the best of your knowledge, because when the business clicks on the register link in the email that they will be sent, the registration page they will reach will be pre-populated with all of their information. Okay, so that's the end of the demos.
and we have about 10 minutes to attempt to answer some of your questions. So let's um, open the question box. Okay. So, so I can uh, see quite a good question that I think we should start off with. Um, a nice simple one. Is there a charge for using eDoc? We've mentioned this before, but no, the use of eDoc is completely free. And in addition, this comes with a help desk. So that's Stuart and myself and other members of staff providing nine to five support, both on the phone and by email. So if you need a bit of hand-holding or if you have any specific questions, you can ask us directly. Okay. Uh, we've got a question asking us to explain a little bit more about season tickets. So I think Poppy, when she was creating a waste transfer note, she was given the option to create either a single transfer or a season ticket. So I'll go through each of these quickly. So a, a, a single transfer is, is a transfer that happens immediately. So at, at the, the time, if it's just a single transfer and you know that you won't be, be transferring more or of the same waste at the same or um, of the same waste, then you might want to just create a, a single transfer. But however, if you if you know that you'll um, you'll be transferring the same waste um, at the same location using the same EWC code more often um, and you might have a, a freak like let's say a frequency of once a week or twice a week once a month um, then you can use a season ticket so this will still allow you to comply with your legal duty of care but it, it takes out a lot of the the work of having to re submit waste transfers between parties so there's a couple of um, notes um, that you must be aware of when you create season tickets the transferer and the transferee or the broken dealer must be the same for every transfer and you must also have the same waste description and the same waste type otherwise you will need to create a another season ticket um, okay I hope that I've explained that well enough but but um, you can we'll, also, we'll be sending out more detailed responses to these questions um, in the email. Um, we've got another question um, that says, as you can add EWC codes, can you also add different container types if you deliver in a number of vehicles? So in a season ticket, you can add more than one EW or more than one waste description per season ticket. Yeah, that's right. So you need to add, you need to um, select on the the, the system um, a button that says add another waste description. So if you if you for example if you're con, um, transferring the same waste, then you just add in the, the same um, EWC code. But you can also sel then select a, a different container. So if you, if for example you transfer waste in two wheelie bins and three and four wheel bins, then you just select that as a separate waste description on, on the note, as you would do if you were creating paper, with paper transfer notes. All right, we're just scrolling through the questions here, so we, it's bear with us if it's, if we take a little bit of time to find a question. We've got another one here. Um, is there an EDOC app? So no, there isn't a dedicated eDoc app, but it is actually possible to use eDoc on a tablet or mobile phone. So the eDoc portal has been designed to be mobile friendly, so the forms adapt to the screen size of your electronic device, such as your phone or your tablet. But it's important to remember that you need a connection to the internet to use eDoc. So if you're relying on using eDoc on site, then remember to check whether there will be mobile data available or, or Wi-Fi. And it's always possible to record the details down first at the time and then input it into eDoc a bit later on. Okay, so we've got another question here which which says, if a 
waste carrier is being used, does the carrier sign the waste transfer note and then is a second waste transfer note produced for the transfer from the carrier to the end waste facility? Yeah, so every movement of waste between partners needs to be covered by a waste transfer note. So if, um, let's say, in a, a quite simple example of a producer creating waste and a carrier picking it up and then a carrier carrier transferring it to an end waste facility, then there needs to be two tr two transfers created there. One from the producer to the carrier and then one another one from the carrier to the end waste facility. Okay. So um, there's one here that we hope that we've covered, but just in case, can you still use eDoc if your customer for your clients aren't registered on eDoc? So hopefully you'll know, yes, you can. Um, to get the best use from eDoc, we would encourage all organizations to ask and invite their customers to register on the system, as that will reduce the number of paper waste transfer notes and the none need to be created. But if your customers aren't willing or able to register for an account, then they shouldn't stop you from using it. Um, you can still create and store all your waste transfer notes on eDoc, so you don't need to bother with the paper and storage. Um, but your customer will need an offline paper copy, which has the signatures of both parties, in order for them to be compliant with duty of care. But because all of your notes are online, you can still use all of the reporting functions of eDoc and have the benefit of that. Okay, so there's another question here about whether a waste transfer note can be amended when the transfer has been made to add in the actual weight of waste that was transferred. Yeah, so this is possible in season tickets. In in single transfers, we um, we expect that it's it will be known the the amount of of waste um, that is being transferred at the time, but in a season ticket, it can be harder to predict exactly how much waste will be transferred in, let's say, a month or so. This can be completed using um, something called the actual um, actual weight. So what what you have to do is to go into your, your season ticket, um, and then you go down, scroll down to the bottom, and it's, uh, there's a button that says more actions. Once you've clicked on that, um, there, you should see a an option. Um, I think it's called create. Uh, what's it called? It's actual weights. I think. Yeah. So the button is either at the bottom under more actions, where you can view all of your actual weights that you've input, or right at the top of the waste transfer note. Once it's been signed and agreed, you can add in. There's a button that says add in actuals. So there you can go in. You get a copy of all the information you've put in with your container type and your volume and your weight, and you can just change the weight if necessary. Okay. Um, thank you very much for all of your questions. We don't actually have any more time um, to answer any any more, um, but uh, we will t attempt to to answer these by email. So we will answer all your questions. We just don't have any time to right now. So um, you can find plenty more information on the eDoc website. That's edoconline.co.uk. And there's introductory videos, information about registering on eDoc, resources that explain duty of care and how to implement eDoc within your organization, news items, and also a comprehensive set of frequent gas questions that I recommend you have a look at. Also, the test system is accessible through the site, as you've seen, so please feel free to register there and start playing around with the system. If you can't find the information you're looking for on the website or if you just want a helping hand in getting started, don't hesitate to get in touch with us. So you can email the help desk on support at edoconline.co.uk. You can call us directly and you'll probably get through to Stuart or me. And you can also find us on Twitter and LinkedIn, so um, follow us there as well. I'd like to thank Ria and CIWM for hosting this webinar and Stuart for joining me. And thank you all so much for giving up your lunch breaks to hear a bit more about eDoc. Well, Back to Ria. Thank you.
Thank you very much, both Stuart and Poppy um, from Resource Future. It's a, an excellent and very informative uh, presentation there. Thank you, everybody, for attending. We really appreciate your time. I would like to remind you that the recording uh, and the slides will be sent to you as a link, including the contact details, and also that there will be a pop-up survey as soon as you've closed your browser down. If you could complete that for us, it's very brief questions, uh, multiple choice, we'd be very grateful. And thank you very much.